Alright guys, my name is Meta Goblin, and today I'm giving you another pet guide. Today we will be covering the best pets for raiding. Now I might be jumping into this video thinking just go for a wolf and it's happy days, but again it's a little bit more complicated than that. The options depend on a number of things, like your raid setup, your gear, particularly your trinkets, what phase of content has been released, and a few other kind of gimmicks. So I'm going to systematically go through every single most viable pet option in the game, give you an analysis of why they are a strong option, and then tell you the best pet in-game that you can tame of each option. And uh, I'll also have a bit of wildcard option at the end of the video, so I think, you, I think you guys might find that quite interesting, so be sure to watch the whole video. But anyway, just before I jump in guys, please do give me a quick follow on Twitch, as when the game comes out, I will be streaming a lot on Twitch. So first of all, let's talk about the wolf. The wolf is honestly the best option that most people will go for most of the time. The reason why it is so strong is because of the ability Furious Howl, which increases the melee attack power of the next physical attack to everyone in the party by 45 to 57 damage. This means you can use the wolf to buff the damage of a melee group, which increases the rage damage quite significantly. However, depending on your raid setup, your raid leader might prioritise shamans in the melee group if they are available with their wind fury totem. So you might be sat there in the raid, not buffing any melee groups because you're sat in a ranged group or a healing group or something, which means your wolf isn't actually being very useful to the raid. This will likely be in a, you know, more likely to be in a horde group with a lot of shamans available, and there's going to be two hunters in the group, in the raid group in, in total. So you might just not be the, the hunter that's being used for the buffs, so you're just kind of being left out, which means going for another pet option is probably going to be more beneficial. So what is the best wolf option, right? So you're probably thinking that this has something to do with pet attack speed, but attack speed doesn't change overall pet DPS because pets that attack faster do less damage with each hit. So you should just go for the look that you like the most, primarily, or the highest level of pet, pet available to you to save the amount of time, because you don't want to level a pet. Well, if you want to, you know, you can obviously, if you like the look of a pet, you can get a lower level pet and level it all the way up. But you might just want to go for a high level pet, and the best option there will be the Blood Axe Warg in the lower Blackrock Spire dungeon. So let's move on to some other options. If you're not going to be the hunter buffing the melee group, the next best option is to go for a cat. You might be thinking more about the Raptor since they both share the 10% damage buff. And there's a number of reasons for that. Primarily, the cats have more HP. Uh, secondly, they have dash, which gets into them into combat faster, which can be very useful if you need the pet to rush down a boss ad. They also have Prowl, which is very useful for running through dungeons because it will prevent your pet from pulling extra mobs when you're trying to skip mob packs, you know, particularly on a Diamol Tribute run, for example. And it's just a little bit easier than uh, you know dim dismissing the pet, reducing its happiness, and then summoning it again. It'll probably save you a lot of time. So, yeah, I mean, furthermore, you know, the, the cat is just the highest DPS option until Zulgarub comes out. We'll talk a bit more about that in the next bit. Um, there are some really good level 60 options in Winter Spring for caps. You've got the Frost, Frost Saber Tigers, uh, male and female ones are all. Some of them are even at level 60, so you just have to level up the happiness to get the training points. And if, but if you want a cooler looking version, guys, just as a side note, you can go for Shy Rotam, which is spawned from doing an elite quest in Wintergrass. So you basically have this item and you have to spawn it, and you can actually tame it. It's an elite mob, so you might need a mate to um, help you in that process. But yeah, this, this pet looks really cool. He's like bright, turquoise, icy blue, so yeah, I'd recommend getting him, because he'll he make you stand out quite a bit. When Zorgarub has been released, which will be Phase 4, if, no, as, if nothing has changed, you'll be able to tame a Wind Serpent in the raid with a higher ranked version of a Lightning Breath that is normally obtainable. The only other way to get this higher ranked version is to actually wait for the Burning, Burning Crusade to be released. With this higher rank, the Wind Serpent takes over on DPS compared to the Cat, especially as the ability is a ranged attack. It also becomes a very strong PvP option. He also has a good intercept ability, which is Dive, which is essentially exactly the same as Dash, so he's going to be able to, you know, rush boss ads, like we said. Obviously the best option, well, you basically, the only option you have, well it's not necessarily the only option, but you will have to tame this pet in Zogarub to get the enhanced version of Lightning Breath, and then you can probably tame then any other looking Wind Serpent that you want, and then pass on the higher ranked Lightning Breath to the new pet, so 
but first of all you will just have to tame the one in Zorgorub. Another option will be the turtle. It has a very useful ability called Shell Shield, which reduces the damage the turtle takes by 50%, but increases the time between your pet attacks by 43% and it lasts a whopping 12 seconds, right? Now it's important to take note that pets die a lot during raids. If you're not clever about how you manage your pet's mobility, then yeah, the pet will probably just get popped by something, some fire or anything really, any kind of raid mechanic. Because it's, it's difficult to be just conscious of where your pet is. It's difficult to even see the pet in the first place, so... In some fights, pets just simply die, right? They just won't survive. And this is because avoidance isn't really much of a thing in vanilla. Avoidance, if you don't know, is a stat in the game. Basically, it reduces the AoE damage that the pet takes. It also you know, becomes very significant more in the later stages of the game. I, I still, you know, I play a Wrath server and my pet dies quite often, so the avoidance is even low in Wrath of Lich King. I can't remember when avoidance was massively buffed, but on retail you pretty much never have to worry about your pets dying. But anyway, this means, you know, your pets do a lot, they do take a lot of damage in raids and it costs mana to keep them healed up and even more to revive them. But with this buff that the turtle has, it might be possible for you to survive certain raid fights and certain raid mechanics. So that's why I thought it was worth mentioning because in certain raid fights, the turtle is probably one of the only pets that can just stay alive for the whole fight, and therefore it will probably end up doing more DPS overall. So it might be a good option for a beginner, you know, if you're new to raiding and uh, you need to get used to the raid mechanics, and then you could probably move on to a higher DPS pet, and then start to learn how to use pet macros to control your pet better, which we will make a video for. And uh, I also feel that turtle could be potentially useful at tanking boss ads to make raidy fights easier, so it probably has some niche usefulness that we're not really aware of, aware of which needs to be experimented with. Now I'm going to finish off with wildcard option, right? If the wildcard option turns out to be um, viable when Classic is released, then it probably will be the strongest DPS option for, for the Hunter pet in the game. Um, but that is a lot, there's a lot to bear in mind when it comes to this wildcard option, that's why I've called it a wildcard option. By the way, this part of the video, at the end of the video, is a little bit unscripted, so be aware of that, guys. So, the, the option here is actually the scorpion, right? The reason why the scorpion stands out is because it does a dot, it's called Poison Scorpid Sting. And what it does, it just puts a dot on the target, it does damage over 10 seconds, and it actually stacks 5 times, okay? And the reason why this can become ridiculously strong is because of snapshotting, right? Before snapshot, uh, well, before dynamic DPS was incre uh, introduced during Models of Drano, where basically dots and everything else would change relating to your temporary buffs, um, everything was snapshotted, right? I've talked about this in previous videos. Basically, a good example, I, I play on a Rafa Lich King server, like I said. What I do on my Death Knight is I get a Trinket proc or a Potion or anything like that that increases my attack power, when I pop it, I ref refresh my dots on the target. But I also refresh my dots on the target just before the buff wears off. And what will happen is the dot will continue to do the increased buffed damage even, in, even after the buff has fallen off. So it basically continues to do extra damage for the duration of the dot. And this people used to exploit that quite a lot and it was changed in Waller's Drano so that when your buff came off, your dots would also stop doing as much damage. And what this what this basically means is that you can exploit uh, trinket procs and potions to massively increase your stats for a period of time. You can use attack power uh, procs, potions and trinkets and spell power ones combined to buff this Scorpid poison, right? And what's interesting is you basically put the dot on the target, and then you keep putting the dot on the target to with Scorpid Sting to refresh the duration. And what happens is it doesn't re-snapshot. Okay, it only snapshots the dot on the first application of Scorpid Sting. So it doesn't matter that it's refreshing and stacking up. It will only bear in mind the original buff. Uh, sorry, the original debuff, a dot, which means the snapshotted version of Scorpid Sting is literally infinite, has an infinite duration because you can keep refreshing it and just refreshing that duration. So what you can do is basically buff your character massively with potions and trinkets 
put the dots on the target with your scorpid and then get the scorpid to stack it, stack it up and keep refreshing it and eventually it has been reported right that you can stack the damage up to 1200 over the course of 10 seconds which is quite significant um, you know just for, for your pet Okay, but there obviously is a lot of drawback and a lot of downsides to this. This is why it is a wild card option. First of all, this, what, what I basically described to you now is how it was originally scripted in vanilla. This is what worked in vanilla. It just worked. And I think it was hot fixed later in, uh, much later, if, if it was hot fixed at all. So depending on how Classic World of Warcraft is going to turn out, it might not be scripted exactly the same. It might not, sim it just simply might not work. So that's something to bear in mind. And... Secondly, debuff slots. There's only 14 de debuff slots in Classic World of Warcraft, which means you may not be allowed to use the Scorpid Poison as your debuff slot. Even though it's technically probably one of the highest dots in the game, debuff slots are probably reserved for raid debuffs, raid DPS debuffs. So you're probably only going to be able to make use of this in smaller raids like AQ20, Zulga Rub, Upper Black, Black, Black Rock Spire. But anyway, I just thought it was a cool thing, a cool niche thing to mention at the end of this video, just to make this video a little bit more interesting. There you go, the Scorpid is probably one of the highest DPS pets in the game, providing everything is... well, providing everything will work when Classic comes out. So anyway, that's where I'm going to end the video. My name is Goblin. until my next video, ciao.